In today's episode, we're diving deep into the latest on new variants, vaccine updates, and expert insights. Stick around for our Q&A at the end. Let's get started. Here's the global situation as of today, May 23rd, 2025. Cases are rising in several regions and new variants are making headlines. Let's break it down. So first off, we've got China. Recent reports are indicating a new wave of infections in major cities like Shanghai and Beijing. Over the past week, more than 10 some cases were recorded in these cities alone. Now, this spike comes after China relaxed some of its zero COVID restrictions, which have been in place since 2020. Because of this, people are now more freely traveling and gathering in large numbers, leading to increased transmission. Moving on, Brazil is seeing a significant spike in infections. In the past seven days, there's been around 15,000 new cases recorded. This surge comes amid ongoing concerns about the monitoring and reporting of cases in the country. Some experts have linked the recent spike to subvariants like NB. 1.8. 1. It was mentioned on X and has been detected in many Brazilian states. However, it's important to note that the subvariant's contribution to the overall caseload is still being investigated. And lastly, in Europe, the World Health Organization has warned of a potential summer surge in cases. While cases are slowly climbing in countries like France and Germany, hospitalizations remain low. Still, the WHO emphasizes the importance of continued surveillance and preparedness measures. Let's move on and talk about variants. Two variants that have been trending on X, NB, 1.8, 1 and XFJ. The next strain data shows both have a high number of spike mutations, suggesting potential immune evasion capabilities. However, the World Health Organization says more data is needed to assess their impact. These variants are believed to be Omicron subvariants known for fast spread, but not necessarily high severity. The European Union has approved a new COVID-19 booster jab targeting the XEC variant. The booster can be administered immediately following the recommendation from the European Medicines Agency. The new shot is designed to enhance the immune response against the dominant variant in the region. And while this move is seen as a proactive measure, it also highlights the evolving nature of the virus. Meanwhile, in the United States, booster uptake remains low with only around 13% of the eligible population receiving an updated booster. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention continues to recommend boosters for individuals aged 65 and above, while for younger groups, the CDC believes natural immunity plays a role. As we continue to monitor these developments, the conversation around booster shots raises an important question. How long can these vaccines protect us? The duration of vaccine protection is an important consideration in our ongoing battle against COVID-19. Our immune system plays a crucial role in fighting off infections, but the strength of that response can wane over time, leaving us more vulnerable to the virus. The field of immunology tells us that the effectiveness of vaccines can diminish over time, requiring booster doses to reinforce our body's defenses. Boosters help to increase the level of antibodies and memory cells in our immune system, providing renewed protection against the virus. So, it's important to stay informed about booster recommendations and guidelines from health authorities like the CDC or WHO, as they provide valuable insights into how to maintain optimal protection against COVID-19. But beyond vaccines, there are other aspects of our health that play a role in our resilience against infections. Factors like overall health, age, and even stress levels can influence our immune system's ability to fight off viruses. As we navigate these challenges, it's essential to adopt a holistic approach to health, incorporating measures such as regular exercise, a balanced diet, and stress management techniques. By taking care of our physical and mental well-being, we can better support our immune system and enhance our natural defenses. Understanding the science behind vaccine protection and taking proactive steps to boost our natural defenses empowers us to make informed decisions about our health. By staying informed and adopting a proactive approach to our well-being, we can better navigate the challenges of COVID-19 and other infectious diseases. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the situation in China, Brazil, and Europe because each region presents unique challenges and requires tailored strategies for containment. In China, the recent spike in cases after the relaxation of COVID restrictions highlights the delicate balance between public health and economic activity. 
As the country reopens, it's crucial for China to invest in robust surveillance and testing measures to identify and isolate cases quickly. The government should also prioritize vaccination, especially among vulnerable populations. Moreover, fostering international collaboration in sharing genomic data and medical expertise will be vital in effectively managing the situation. Similarly, Brazil's rising cases underscore the need for comprehensive testing, contact tracing, and isolation strategies. The country's vast size and diverse population require a decentralized approach to health care, and strengthening primary care facilities in underserved areas can significantly improve disease surveillance. Additionally, addressing vaccine hesitancy through public awareness campaigns and community engagement is essential to increase coverage and protect vulnerable groups. And in Europe, where cases are showing signs of increase, a coordinated response across member states is crucial. The European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control should strengthen surveillance and early warning systems to anticipate outbreaks. Member states should also ensure equitable access to vaccines and treatments and implement public health measures such as mask mandates and social distancing when necessary. Furthermore, it's essential to address the underlying social and economic factors that contribute to the spread of the disease. Reducing health disparities, improving access to health care and addressing vaccine hesitancy within communities are critical steps. Investing in research and development for new and improved vaccines and treatments will also be crucial as the virus continues to evolve. Global collaboration, knowledge sharing, and mutual support are vital to effectively combating the pandemic. Through joint efforts, we can mitigate the impact of COVID-19 and pave the way for a healthier and safer future for all. So let's shift our focus to something positive. The approval of the new CTEC booster in the EU brings hope for enhanced protection against the dominant variant in the region. Meanwhile, the continued recommendation of natural immunity as a form of protection in the U.S. sparks debate about the relative contributions of vaccines and prior infections. It's a complex issue with valid points on both sides. On one hand, natural immunity acquired through infection can indeed provide robust protection. Our immune system is remarkably efficient at recognizing and fighting off pathogens. When exposed to a virus, our body generates antibodies and memory cells specifically tailored to that pathogen. This targeted response can lead to a strong immune memory, which provides significant protection against subsequent infections. Studies have shown that natural immunity can offer a high degree of protection against reinfection, sometimes exceeding the protection provided by vaccines. Additionally, natural immunity is often accompanied by a broader immune response involving various components of our immune system. This multifaceted response may lead to a more robust and long-lasting immune memory compared to the immunity induced by vaccines. However, relying solely on natural immunity comes with inherent risks. Firstly, contracting a viral infection can have serious health consequences, particularly for vulnerable individuals. The risks associated with COVID-19 range from mild symptoms to severe complications such as hospitalization and long-term health issues. By relying on natural immunity, we expose ourselves and others to these potential health risks. Secondly, the path to natural immunity is unpredictable. It depends on exposure to the virus, which is not under our control. Some people may never develop immunity because they haven't been exposed to the virus. This unpredictability makes natural immunity an unreliable strategy for public health. Now, this decision to prioritize natural immunity in certain segments of the population raises ethical considerations. By not offering boosters to certain groups, we're essentially making a conscious choice to expose them to potential health risks. This raises questions about equity and fairness in healthcare. On the other hand, the decision to limit boosters to specific age groups in the U.S. might be driven by scientific evidence suggesting that younger, healthier individuals may indeed derive greater benefits from natural immunity. Studies have indicated that younger people have a lower risk of severe illness from COVID-19 and may develop robust immune responses through natural infection. However, it's essential to continuously evaluate this approach as the virus evolves and our understanding of the disease progresses. Ultimately, finding the right balance between promoting natural immunity and providing adequate protection through vaccination is an ongoing challenge. As we navigate this complex issue, open discussions, transparency, and a commitment to equity in healthcare are crucial. Let's move on to our Q&A section. A viewer asked, 
Are NB 1.8, 1 and XFJ more dangerous than XEC? Based on currently available WHO data, there is no evidence to suggest that these variants cause more severe illness than the XEC variant. The XFJ and NB 1.8 one variants have been detected globally, but their contribution to overall infections is still under investigation. Notably, both variants have numerous spike mutations, which could potentially enhance immune evasion capabilities. However, further studies are necessary to fully comprehend their characteristics and potential severity. We'll continue to monitor and provide updates on these variants as more information becomes available through official channels like the WHO. Thank you for joining us today on COVID Global Podcast. If you found this update helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe for weekly updates. Your support means the world to us. Stay safe and healthy. And remember to stay tuned for more updates. Until next time.